Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. To pick up on the citrus fruit line that Hei Song started us on last week, there's a story about uh, Zen Master Sung San and a Tibetan Lama. And they're together, and Sung San holds up an orange, says to the Lama, what is this? The Lama kind of looks at him strangely. Once again, Sung San says, what is this? The Lama is more bemused now than he had been. What is this? The Lama leans over to his attendants and says, um, where did this guy come from? Don't they have oranges? And so you've got an orange. And the orange is made up of a peel and some pulp and seeds and segments. So then you peel the orange. Is the peel the orange or is the round thing that's left without a peel the orange? Is it the seeds or the pulp or the segment the orange? What if one of them gets eaten? Is that segment that's not there anymore the orange or is the object that has one fewer segment in it the orange what about if you eat the whole thing all of its constituent elements are back in the same place together is that an orange somebody gets into a car accident they, they lose a hand. Is the hand the person or what's left without a hand the person? Same accident. Somebody loses an eye or an ear or a nose. Is that still the same person or is the eye or ear or nose the person? Somebody gets COVID and loses their sense of smell and taste. Are they the same person or is the sense that person? Back into the car accident. Somebody gets a traumatic brain injury, loses their memory, or they go into a coma. Is that the person, or is it no longer the person? Huayan Patriarch Fatsang um, used an example of uh, a house and the rafters as uh, his take on all this. So if the building doesn't have a roof on it yet, is it a house? The roof hasn't been attached to the house yet. Is the roof the house? What about the rafters that hold up the roof? Are they the house? Are they rafters? Are they firewood? What about the nails that hold all of that together? Are they the house? Is the building without nails a house? We make decisions about what constitutes whole or part and which whole or part is worth more than another. 
the object without a peel is an orange, but the peel itself isn't. You lose an arm in the accident, person is still the person. Maybe not if they're in a coma. I would say it's not the same person anymore. Or maybe go through changes in life. Oh, he's not the same person anymore. Is the entire building contained in a single nail? And does the single nail contain the entire building? That was Fasang's thought. What we determine a thing to be is, as the Dharm, uh, Diamond Sutra points out, also no thing. What side of thing or no th thing we're on at any given moment entirely is made up by thinking. Dependent on causes and conditions, it's characterized by emptiness. None of these views represent reality in totality, to rhyme for you. This applies to ourselves as well. Sometimes we base our identity or what we think of as ourselves in reference to our job or our family or where we live, you know, a role we might play, father, son, sister, mother, whatever it might be, age even. If I lose my job, am I still me? In my own definition, I might have a hard time figuring out if that is me or not. It's not the me that I was the day before, and I don't have my reference point that I based my identity, my self-identification on. Empty, empty, empty. The constituent parts in and of themselves aren't me, at least in my thinking, right? Although, when the constituent parts aren't there, my idea of me, this sense of self that I have, is totally disrupted. If I don't have an arm, if I don't have a job, if I've lost, lost my sense of smell, Externally to you, I might look just like I did the day before. But what I think is going to be different. And the result is different. It's not plus or minus. It's not zero. It's not minus one. It's all just emptiness. This arbitrary sense of selfness that applies to us as individuals also applies to families, fellow employees, groups, races, nationalities, whatever. And each individual constituent part is not necessarily the whole. But without the constituent parts, the whole is different. 
the universe has changed. As far as international relations go, still arbitrary and empty. The IRA was at war with the uh, British for 30 years most recently. NATO didn't respond. Al-Qaeda attacks the U.S. Everybody shows up. What group, what identity, what's changing? Everything is always changing. The perception of the value of one versus the other is always changing. Identification as a separate self is empty. I can't stress that enough. Me thinking I'm me based on arms and legs and eyes and ears and nose and brain functions, so on and so forth. I think they make me, but they're not me. They're not my true nature. And our true nature is not to make these arbitrary divisions. It's to realize the interconnectedness and reliance on all of the constituent parts, be they my nose or everyone on the North American continent. We rely on our constituent parts. All the constituent parts are interconnected. They're interdependent. And the more we appreciate that, the more we take that to heart, the less likely we are to do harm to another. Since it's May Day, I'll bring up the International Workers of the World, whose motto was, an injury to one is an injury to all. And that is absolutely true. I'm just going to close this with uh, something from uh, Mirror of Zen, So San's uh, collection of Quotations, if a poor man comes begging, give him a portion of what you have. Have great pity on him, as if you and he were parts of the same body. This is true giving. The commentary is, when you and others become one, you were said to be of the same body. It is a fact for all of us in the same family of man that we come into the world empty-handed, we leave empty-handed. This is the lifetime plan for the family of man. Happy May Day, and uh, may we all work to save all.